All right, what up, YouTube? So we're going to talk about best times to trade Forex. Uh, so if you guys have a chance, go to this website. Uh, it is investopedia.com. So the link is up here. Uh, I will put this uh, URL link in my video description so you guys can go here and take a look at this for yourself. A lot of people have asked me, a lot of people have asked me, like, what is the best time to trade Forex? Obviously, I can't give you the best answer because for me, it would be London through New York. That would be my best takeaways for those two sessions. But the London overlap would be my top session to trade. Now, if you cannot trade at those times because you are working, then don't even look at those times, okay? Everyone talks about their own personal preference on their favorite sessions to trade. And you have to remember that, okay? So I'm going to say it one more time. Everyone has their personal preference on their favorite sessions that they love to trade, right? And that comes down to currency pairs too. So if you work full time and let's just say you work from 8 in the morning till 4 p.m. or you work from 9 to 5 or you work from 10 to 6 or you work first shift, then you have to understand that the, the majority of your trade, your trading is going to be in Tokyo. Now, Tokyo sessions is not the greatest. Okay. Now, if you like trading Tokyo sessions, that's totally on you. Now, for me personally, the first, the first two hours of Tokyo is by far the best out of Tokyo. And after that, then there's really not a whole lot because then you're just waiting for the London sessions to kick in anyways. So it's totally what is going to be working for you if you're trading part-time then you got to figure out what hours you're going to be trading part-time i'm talking about this now before i talk about the best times to trade the forex markets because some people don't have a clue when they get in so they're hopping from one place to the next place but they're but they're still at their jobs and i don't understand why you would want to do that especially at your job right so if you're focusing on your job and you're making money at your job you should not take the time away from your job to do this i know people talk about multitasking but i don't believe in multitasking because what could you really possibly be a multitasker on anyways okay so that's totally your decision if you want to try and multitask trading at your job uh it's not something that i would recommend i don't even talk about that so that's why i said if you want when you do go full-time in forex then you ultimately know what sessions you really want to hop on and what currency pairs you're going to be trading. So anyways, I want to talk about the key takeaways here because this is this is the best highlights of, of this page anyways. So obviously, you know, they talk about the Forex market running four different parts of the world, right? Because we have four sessions, right? We have Sydney sessions, which is right now. Okay. I don't advise trading Sydney sessions when New York is closed. Your spreads are so high. Swap fees are occurring and also commissions are really, really high. So do I recommend trading at this time? Right now it's 4.32 PM right now for me. Do I recommend getting in right now? No, because it's only Sydney. I would wait an hour and a half until 6 PM central time for me, which is in Chicago, but it was in central time standard or 7 PM Eastern time. If those that live in the East coast and by New York, then yes, when Tokyo is open, Yes, by all means, go ahead and do it. So <clears throat> I know some people are going to be like, well, how do I know? <laughs> how do I know when Tokyo opens? Well, you got to, you better start looking at, you know, at your time zones and calculate your time zones. If you don't know how to calculate your time zones, go to this website. The Forex market hours. You can't go wrong um, using forexmarkethours.com. This thing is, uh, well, not preset. You would have to preset yourself here. Uh, I'm on central time. Oh, no, wait, what? No, it's not. It's not 533 here. Come on. Come on. I don't get why I did that. It's not. Oh, maybe I'm. Okay. Yeah, Mexico City. Yeah, okay, that's the right time. So obviously I'm not in Mexico City, but I'm basing off of CST, which is Central Standard Time. So 
take a look at this website. I will put this in the video description. You have to really know the basics of time zones and what time, what sessions you're in. If you don't know what sessions you're in, what is the point of even trading? That's the most basic. That's that's this is the first thing that I did was that I was trying to understand what sessions I I was in. I was I didn't really care for support and resistance because that's just basic stuff. And then uh, the the second thing I wanted to learn was what were the best times to trade because I was constantly trading throughout the day, throughout the night, and then after three to four months of trading and understanding what sessions, I'm like, man, London overlap is where it's at, or the first two hours of London is very awesome or the first two hours of New York, but that's still London overlap. You know, the first two hours of Tokyo is pretty cool too. Cause you can scalp. It's a little bit more volatile, right? So you can scalp the markets. So see, I'm giving you guys hints. First two hours of each session, right? Not the first two hours of Sydney. If you are in Sydney right now, pretty much shame on you because you are getting it at the wrong time. And if you're a beginner, Okay, you're learning. But like I said, don't get in on Sydney. Right now, we're just only in Sydney. And I'm going to highlight this right now. 1600, 1700, right? So it's 435 p.m. for me, which is 1600. And then 1700 would be Sydney still. Now, remember, 18 is 6 p.m. Central time for me. 1800 hours, right? GMT time. So I, I'm hopping in two different topics. But uh, if you cannot justify and this is the only time you could trade uh you're gonna have to get up during london sessions to trade if you live here in the united states unless you got some free time in the morning to trade the overlap with new york sessions when new york opens at 7 a.m central time here or 8 a.m eastern time for it and up in uh those that live on the east coast so yeah well let's hop back here because this was not the topic i was talking about anyways Let's go back here. So best time to trades, right? Me, my personal preference, London sessions through New York sessions. The London overlap is by far the most volatile session that I have ever traded and I've seen so far. Okay. Tokyo is not the greatest session to scalp because it is the slowest session compared to Sydney anyways. So now... I mean, I would rec yeah, I, re I like I said, I would recommend reading New York session. I mean, yeah, I recommend reading all that. I don't really, I mean, yeah, if you want to read Sydney, that's on you, but Sydney, there ain't, ain't a whole lot going on. Now, when they talk about, <clears throat> when they talk about these times, these are Eastern times, 3 a.m. to noon, which calculates to my time, Central time. London opens at two in the morning for me and then closes at 11 a.m. And remember, that the last three hours of, of London is overlapping with the first three hours of opening of New York. Okay. I know it sounds kind of confusing the way I'm saying this, but the London overlap for me is from 7 a.m. till, yeah, from 7 a.m. till 10, 10 a.m. I mean, uh, 11 a.m. So that market is hot and by far probably the craziest market I've seen so far at that time. So, those three hours can be very crucial if you have the time to do it. Now, if you don't, you have to go back and understand how many hours you can calculate to work on this part-time. And as a part-time trader, you should not be trading high risk and aggressive because you don't, because if you're not, if you don't have, if you don't really have the time to stare at the screen to understand what you're looking at, then how can you be a high risk aggressive trader at the same time? It's not going to happen. When I was going to school full time, okay. When I was going to school full time, when I was babysitting my kids, I was constantly on the screen, okay. Whether it was on the phone or on my computer, because I wanted to make it work. Now, if you don't have that time, don't even bother doing it, okay. I know a lot of people come into this game of trading forex, and they think it's a game, right? They think it's a video game. They can always reset themselves. No, it's not. Uh, they think they can come in and make a lot of money. It's not going to happen. You can get lucky. You can get lucky on a few trades, but you can't get lucky forever, okay? You're going to get burned hard. <laughs> like, I got burned pretty hard on my first video I made, right? Flipping from 350 to 26,000 and end up losing it the next day on NFP. I mean, that's crazy. That's my story right there for you guys. Don't I don't want nobody repeating my, my crazy stories like that, you know? But 
in all honesty, like I said, you have to understand how you're going to calculate your work schedule hours with your free time hours when you're off work, because for those of you that have a family, right? They're married, right? And they have kids. If you're single, this does pertain to you single. You're single, man. You got time in the world, man. You, you got a lot of time on your hands, but to you know, to those that are parents and are married and have other obligations, you have to justify how much hours you can really put in on a part-time basis on uh, from Monday through Friday. If you can't, don't even bother doing this. You know, I, I that's just the, my honest answer for you guys. A lot of people try to come in and say, you know, I want to quit my full-time job. It's not going to happen, man. It take It's going to take at least six months to a year to grasp something, like to grasp on some kind of technique or strategy that you're working on. And once you finally find it, then you have to implement a, some other strategies to that so you, you can adapt to the markets when the markets are not going to the with your uh, strategic plan that you that you plan for for that week because there's other techniques and um, adaptable skills that you can work on. So, but other than that, I know this is a different topic, but I want to talk this because some. I'll, this was another top. Uh, this is another question that was being asked so many times. What was the what's the best session to trade, or what was the best time to trade forex? I'm like, man, if you have the time, trade London through New York. That's the time to do it because then you can understand why London and New York are so volatile, and Tokyo is not volatile at all. Tokyo is Tokyo is the slowest session, but if you understand Tokyo, then you can work with of uh, you can work with that session and go with London and New York. If you guys get what I'm saying, every session has a pattern. Every session has its own ups and downs. Okay. But once you figure that out for yourself, then you're like, okay, great. I know what sessions I want to trade. I know what sessions I'm not going to trade. I know what days I can work with. I know what days I cannot work with. Right. So easy peasy, right? But you got to break it down on your own structure on your schedule. So Arnett, that's it guys. Peace. See you guys tomorrow for the next video.